so how will you find out when homework one is posted? Mailing list. Derek Forsyth. Corksite, that's one way. Mailing list. Mailing list, yeah, it's posted on the mailing list, right? So if I have a mailing list, so I can tell you all about these things. So uh, make sure you're checking it, make sure it's delivering emails to you, all that kind of good stuff. All right. Okay, so we already talked about this. We talked about um, all the different types, the semantics of regular expressions, right? So to refresh everybody's memory, we're trying to find a way to define um, a concise language that can express the tokens that we want to extract from this sequences of characters and strings. Okay, let's do something. We're going to define a letter as any character from A through Z lowercase, A through Z uppercase, right? So the dots, right, are not actually part of the regular expression we're defining, but they, you know, they're signifying that we're going from a small a to small z, up to uppercase a to uppercase c. Uh, then we'll define the digits as 0 through 9, right? So a digit is anything that is a numeral 0 through 9. OK. So now the great thing about regular expressions is we can combine them very easily to do things that we might have. So what's the, so I think we talked about this maybe a while ago, but refresh every memory. So what's the, um, what is the pattern for a variable name in, I think, C or C++ or Java? Ledger digit. What was it? Ledger digit. Ledger digit? What does that mean? Like you can describe it. You don't have to. Start with a letter. It can't end with a digit. Is that in Java or? or no, it can end with a digit. It can end with it a digit. Can't start with a digit. Right. Exactly. So, uh, can you have exclamation points or parentheses in your in your variable names? No. 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 Yeah. So we can actually just using these two regular expressions, right? Letter or digit. We can write that regular expression. So what's that regular expression going to look like? Where we say we want to define. We'll call it an identifier, right? That'll be our general term for variable names or function names, uh, anything when we're going to identify something. So how would we write that as a regular expression? So how do we capture that starts with a letter? We say Right, are remember the semantics of how we define the regular expression, right? But here we want to write the <coughs> regular expression that's language is all valid identifier, right? So we only can use the dot, the concatenation operator, the um, uh, or operator, the bar, or the star operator, or I mean, we can use parentheses and that kind of stuff. Letter or digit. letter or so if we have that at the start, right? That's means you can start with either a letter or a digit. Letter and. Like every combination of letter oh. well, after a letter. Yeah, so the first thing we need is a letter, right? We want to say that, okay, the first thing of an identifier is a letter, right? And then we want to concatenate that so the dot operator followed by letter or number. Any combination, which is any star. combination, which would be star. Yeah, exactly. And we could also do or, we'll add the underscore in there since you can add the underscores in there. Um, so it looks something like this. <laughs> so what's missing from this? The dot. The dot operator, the dot operator where? In between the letter and letter. In between this letter and yeah. that, the parentheses? Yeah. Yeah, there should be a dot there. Why is there not a dot there? <coughs> according to this, then it says it's implied, but that's also. If you're reading the slide, doesn't count. I know. <laughs> okay, so why is there not a dot there? Because I'm lazy? Which makes sense. Because it's implied multiplication. Yeah. Yeah, so that's the convention we're going to use. So. Um, so we've left out the dot here, right? And uh, so basically the way we're going to use is this, this is implied that when we have two regular expressions next to each other, right, just like in multiplication, when you're taking a math class, you always write x star y, I mean x multiplied by y, or 5 multiplied by y. No, you just write 5x or xy, right, and that means x times y. So how can 
this isn't L E T T E R all concatenated together. Yeah, because we're ensuring that it starts with a letter, or at least it contains, you know, that it that something exists. Because since we have the letter or digit or underscore uh, using the clean star, mm -hmm. that means it could be empty set. Correct. Or so not the question empty. though is why Epsilon. Why does this regular expression not define something that starts with an L followed by something that starts with an E? Yeah. Because letter is a token? Uh, uh, yes, we've oh. defined letter as a token, right? So we've defined it as a regular expression. So when you see letter here now, we're not talking about, you know, L concatenated with E, concatenated with T, concatenated with T, right? We're talking about the regular expression. But, you know, you can just drop that whole thing in here for every instance of letter, right? That just sounds and that's, uh, you know, it's exactly the same regular expression. It just sounds like a lot more work. Mm -hmm. uh, it is a lot more work. Okay, so let's test our understanding. So is this a, does this match the token ID? Yes. It's a letter starting with any combination of numbers, letters, and underscores. So it's a letter, so this matches this letter here, right? And this is what, any combination of letter, digits, or underscores? <coughs> Letters, digits, underscores. What about this? No. No, no why not? Start, start, start with the letter. letter. Start with the letter. Yeah, exactly. So if you think of the language that ID describes, right, that this regular expression describes, if you were to write out every single string in that language, can this string here ever appear in that set? No. Exactly, because it never, it it starts with a number, and this, all of the strings that this regular expression defines will all start with a letter, right, because of how we've written the regular expression. Questions? Is like wind howling you guys hear? When you guys hear that too, that's the thing. It's just the buzz from the speaker. Oh, okay. So then the next question becomes, okay, so it seems pretty easy, right? We can easily write a regular expression to define the token that we want to capture in our language. So we were able to define the identifier, the ID token that says, okay, starts the letter and is followed by any number of letters or numbers or underscores. So how do we define a, a literal number in our language? So how would you write a regular expression to do that? to define that token. Yeah. So the define is like a number of digits. Yeah. That meet together pretty much. Exactly. So one way you could say is, well, a number is just digit star, right? So any number of digits, that's a number. So I want you to think about if that's correct. So does this match the literal one, three, two? Uh, does it match the empty string? Yes, it does. It does. Probably not exactly what we want, right? Because the empty string is not a literal number, right? Okay, so we want to avoid that. So then what can we do? So digit concatenated with digit star? Yeah, so digit concatenated with digit star, right? So just put that in front of it. So, and you know, here we're using our convention again and not using the dot operator, but implying it here. So now does one, three, two match? Mm -hmm. Yes. What about zero? Does that match? Yep. Yes. What about this? Yep. Do you want that to match? I mean, technically, it's zero. Yeah. It depends on how much like memory you have to spare. If you're doing this on like an Arduino, you probably don't want something like that to be valid. Are those both the same zero? Yeah. It probably could be. Could be. Right, it's like a bunch of, like, it seems like a mistake, right? Like maybe you're the programmer and originally you had a one in front of here and then you like accidentally deleted that one and left all these zeros, right? In math, you, don't, you know, you want, I don't know, one maybe property of your language you would want is there's a canonical value for everything, right? You don't want a thousand different ways to say the literal zero. 
maybe only want one. Uh, or if you think about a language like uh, C or Java, starting with a zero means it's an octal number, which means it's in a completely different decimal system. So uh, you know, maybe you don't want, well, that's not a good example. But, mm. um, so let's try and get rid of this. Can we get rid of this using regular expressions? I think so. So how would we do this? What would our regular expression look like? Let's first, so we're first going to find a little helper regular expression, right? So we're going to define something that's just one through nine. So then how can we use this to update our description of a number? By concatenating the digit with digit star? Yeah, so we say it has to start with either one through nine, and then can be anything, any number of digits. Right, so now we say, okay, got to start with one through nine. So is one, three, two mm -hmm. in that yep. max time? Yes. What about zero? No. No. Uh, well, technically, can p digit can be an empty string, right? Can it? Can it? Can't it? It's not included. So what's the language described by p digit? What's in here? Oh, yeah, never mind. So, yeah, I don't think zero would be possible, right? Yeah, so the language described by p digit is the second containing the string one, the second containing the string two, the second containing the string three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And when you concatenate p digit with digit star, there's an epsilon in here, but p digit does not have any epsilons in it. So all the strings that this regular expression is going to create all have um, epsilon in them. No, no, don't, none of them have epsilon in them. They're all at least length one. Wait, so now digit is what? Is digit zero? Included in zero? Digit includes it's zero, yes. So then that would be okay. The zero there is okay. The zero here is okay, but the problem is we're saying it has to start with one through nine. Does this start with one through nine? No, okay. So it's not okay. Yeah, no, then it doesn't matter. Uh, that's okay. Um, you could just um, not full P digit, digit star, and then you have an or and just one literal zero. Right. Yeah. I, was gonna say. So I guess, but the other thing is, does it, it does, does it match this? No. It's a bunch of zeros. So we're making some progress, right? <laughs> Getting there. Exactly. Okay. So now I'm being a little more explicit <coughs> concatenation, right? P digit, digit star, or zero. So we've got one, two, three, we've got zero, we've got zeros. Uh, what about this? Does this match? Nope. No. No? So does one, two, three match? Yes. 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 Yeah. Does the zero match? Yes. No. Does all the zeros match? No. No. And does this match? No. No, because no, this ABB junk is not in our regular expression. Yeah. Wait, sorry. How does the single zero work? Ah. How's that? Uh, up here at the top, the or. Yeah. Right? So it's saying this whole thing or no, zero. No, the entire thing. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So basically, we kind of just put in a special case that says, okay, we'll match zero. It has either has to be exactly zero or it has to be uh, a one, one through nine followed by <laughs> zero through nine, any number. Way it says it's got to start one, one through nine, mm -hmm. followed by, uh, followed by any number zero through nine digits. So that matches a one, two, three, right? It's one, which matches p digit, followed by two and three is digit star, so that matches all those digits. Okay, so then zero okay, is okay here. Right, exactly. So one, two, three is okay. Zero is okay. All zeros is not matched by this regular expression. Uh, 1901 ABB, or ABB, it doesn't matter, doesn't match, right? Because match. there's letters in there. That's not our regular expression. All right. So now we've defined a constant integer number, right? So we can use this token. Anytime we see a number, we'll be able to say, hey, yeah, this token is a number. And we can differentiate that from identifiers, uh, which is very good. Okay, let's make it slightly more complicated. How do we do a decimal number? By concatenating a number, a dot, and a number. Yeah. So yeah, that'd be the, the way to do it, right? We take the number that we already have. We know pretty much a decimal is a number, dot, a number, right? Number can't have number can't have leading zeros though. We'll get there. One thing first. <coughs> Why is there this slash here <coughs> in front of that zero, escape. in front of that dot? Escape, escape, so escape care. It's a dot? No, it's a not a concatenation. Yeah, so it's an actual period, right? So the dot operator 
is a special symbol in our regular expression. So if we want to specify a regular expression that matches the character dot, or that matches the symbol in the alphabet dot, we're going to preface it with a slash. That'd be the same thing if we want to use a bar, right? We put a slash in front of it too, or if we want to match uh, parentheses. Yeah. But the problem is, we specifically made numbers so that it couldn't have an excessive amount of zeros in it, where that's actually very important when you're talking decimal math. Yes. Yes. Okay. So then what happens? So once you add this, this escaping business seems very easy. You just add a slash. But then how do you use a slash? You have to escape the slash too, right? Which is very familiar if you're doing, uh, you know, C programming and using C strings or Java strings or string literals. You have to deal with this escaping. It can be quite crazy. And actually, uh, this um, actually a lot of security problems come from this escaping business. But that's another issue. Okay, so let's look at this. Does this match 1.5? Yes. So we have a number. So is one enough? Does one match number? Yes. Yeah, so it matches P digit followed by zero or more, the zero of the digit. Followed by a dot, followed by a number five, which is a P digit. That works fine. 2.10? Yep. Yeah? Mm -hmm. so two's a number, ten's a number, the dot between works good. What about 1.01? Nope. <coughs> Why is that one no good? Zero? Why is that? P digit doesn't include zero, so after the dot, it can't start with a zero. Exactly. So we explicitly wrote our num so that zero one does not match, right? So we had said that a num has to begin with one through nine, right? And so if we just use this definition, num dot num, now we're matching other things which are not. We we can't actually match the decimal that we want to match. How do we fix it? What did we use the last time? What did we say? Just instead of using num, could we use digit for the second one? Yeah. So let's say, yeah, instead of num, we'll say, okay, we just want digits, right? We want 0 through 9 stars, so we'll have any number of digits. Um, are you guys like following these? And mm -hmm. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> good. It's a good setup, I should ask you to do that. That helps. Um, cool. Okay, so then do we match 1.5? No. Yes. Yeah. Do we match 210? What about 101? Yes. Yes. Yeah. What about one dot? Unfortunately. Yes, no. also. So close. No. No? Well, it's not. It's not, the dot's not followed by a digit. Exactly. Digit, can, a digit, can, digit, digit can include zero or more. more. So digit star includes epsilon. Oh, so then it would pass. Exactly. Yeah. So this one dot is in the language described by this regular expression. Or anything dot. Yeah. So we can do what we did before. Yeah. Digit dot digit. Star. Yeah, so we can say, okay, well let's change it. We'll add a digit before there. And say, okay, a number has got to be a dig a number followed by a dot, followed by a digit, followed by zero or more digits. So does one point five match that? <coughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. The number dot digit. And this matches, this goes to epsilon, so this doesn't match anything. 210. 0.01. Does that match? Yeah. Yeah. Digit includes 0, right? Digit includes 0, yes. So it does work. Digit includes 0, p digit does not include 0. OK, is 1 dot in that regular expression? No. We've said, okay, great, we've got rid of that. What about this? Yes. Nope. Zero dot zero zero? Yeah, no, wait. No, yeah. number doesn't include zero. Number can start start with one zero. zero. Number can start via zero, right? And digit, number digit is, star is zero, zero. Uh, P digit, digit star, or zero. Right? The dot matches here. So zero matches the digit, and digit star matches zero. Do we want this? Yes? How else do you do six bits? Huh? How else do you do significant figures? Yeah, so one one argument for this would be, well, you want to specify, you know, if you're using this for scientific <coughs> calculations, right? 
you want to specify the zeros because that will specify your significant figures. Uh, do computers normally work like that? No. No, right? Because they're just defining a value, uh, and it's going to translate this to whatever or boolean or float, or sorry, not boolean, double or float, uh, depending on the size, right? So, um, yeah. So do we? I mean, we got rid of all zeros on the other one, right? So do we want this? Yeah. Might as well. Yeah, might as well get rid of it, right? So, you know, you can keep adding <laughs> zeros here. It's not really what we want. So, but we'll stop there. I don't know, maybe we do want this because it's getting kind of ridiculous, right? <laughs> but you can see how you can keep trying to refine these to restrict the languages that are, the strings that are met so that you know exactly how to, the parser knows how to understand and interpret when there's a literal decimal and the programmer knows how to write and express a literal decimal, right? These are like, these are very important things. Seems like you can never quite get it perfect. It's tricky, yes. You need so there's an interplay here, right? Between so we'll we'll get into a little bit of the expressiveness of regular expressions versus other kind of languages. Um, that's really more for your 355 class, so we don't touch on that here. Uh, but yeah, there's an interplay between how precise you can get these versus how correct they are versus how easy they are for somebody else to understand. understand. Um, so that's what the job of the language designer is doing when they define the syntax of the language. They're saying, okay, how do I specify? And we didn't even talk about how you specify hex values or binary values or octal values or how do you define const string literals, right? Those are also uh, interesting. How do you do escapes inside string literals? Um, some languages have multiple ways to define string literals. Uh, Python has sing like single quote, double quotes, triple, double quotes, all kinds of crazy stuff. And all that has to be defined by the programmer so that the, by the language designer. Okay. So to recap, what we want to do, we're trying to take the sequence of bytes and turn it into a sequence of tokens. Right, so we've seen how to define tokens. How do we define tokens? There's rules. Rules using what? We Regular define expressions. definitions. Regular expressions, yeah, exactly, right? So we have, we define some regular expressions. These define the tokens in our language. And our goal is we want to turn this series of bytes and turn it into a sequence of tokens. Uh, so what we're going to use not only in the class when we talk about, um, to think about how the lexer actually works, right? So now we're thinking about a piece of software that is job of this lexer is to turn this series of bytes into a sequence of tokens. Um, so what we're going to think of is this lexer has a method called get token. <coughs> and so get token reads from the input stream and returns the token that matches that <coughs> input, the input stream, the next token. And this is the lexer, the lexer's doing its job here of looking through the series of bytes and figuring out, based on the tokens that are defined, which token matches the first part of the input stream. <coughs> And this is, will be, so, you know, we're, we use this method in class. We're going to use it also on the programming assignments. Um, so for the next summer, programming assignment, we'll give you this uh, Alexa, and you'll have to use this get token method and understand how it works. So does it find the tokens <coughs> in a string? Tricky question. What do you mean by find? Does it look and say, okay, uh, this is a pattern, this matches, it's a token? Yes. So yes, we're going to see exactly how it works because we have to understand how it works, right? We're, this class is about dispelling magic, right? So <laughs> it's not just something that we give you. It's a thing that you know how to do and you're going to understand exactly how it works and how it decides which token uh, to return. Okay, so our tokens are specified using regular expressions, right? And these are what we want to get back. So our lexer is taking in bytes so it can be from a file, it can be from standard in, it can be from the network, whatever. Taking in a sequence of bytes, turning those into tokens so that we get something like, hey, there's a number followed by an identifier, followed by a number, followed by an operator, followed by an ID, followed by a decimal, whatever. Everything that you, the programmer, need to, or that the other parts of the program interpretation process need to know to understand this, this uh, language.
let's say we have these tokens, right? So we have our identifier token, right? So we have letter concatenated with letter or digit or underscore star. Okay. To make things easier, we'll define a specific identifier called the dot, or the token called the dot. <coughs> then we'll have a number. We define our number exactly how we did it before, right? P digit um, concatenated with digit star or zero. Decimal as number dot digit digit star. So the question is, what token would get token return on this specific string? So remember, the lexer is essentially consuming the input. So it wants to return the first, the token that matches this string. What would it return? Number dot number uh, ID dot. Just one token. Well, if you called it once, right? So this is the thing. So. Remember, our, so our API get token, we call this, it returns us whatever token, id dot num decimal. None of them. Decimal. Yeah. Uh, are we assuming that the order it checks it in is the order listed? Yes. So the order, it always goes left, well, uh, I mean, order. top to bottom in this case. Like uh, it checks id before dot. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. We're not getting into how it actually works yet. We're getting into how we think it works. Yeah. It wouldn't be either num or decimal. Right. So why num or decimal? Because it just checks criteria. Right. So where does num match? So num matches what? 1.1. The one. And then, well, num matches just one, right? Right. And then decimal matches what? 1.1? So would it return num? Mm -hmm. That's that's yeah. I think it doesn't match any of the identifiers above. <coughs> you have to do like a combination. Doesn't match any of the identifiers above? I don't think it does. It does. I think you have to do a combination between them to match the exact token that was ah. given. Okay. Yeah. So what? Because because you have A B C in the middle. So you have a one point one, then you have A B C. Right. That is given by an identifier. Is an ID, for example. So right. You would come like you, you would combine num and decimal with ID, for example. So you have two tokens, right? Yeah. So uh, really a bunch of ways it can interpret. Exactly. So that's so every time we call get token, it's going to return us the next token. So remember, we want to turn these bytes into a sequence of tokens. So our first call to get token is going to return some token, and the second call to it, if there's a token left, should return another token. And then we call it again, and it'll give us another token, right? So it's doing it in series based on essentially going through this string. So yeah, eventually we will want multiple tokens from here. The question is when we call it a first time, is it going to return num? No. Is it going to return decimal? Yes. Is it going to return ID? No. Why? Which one and why? Decimal is most likely the one it will return. Why decimal? Because if it's going along left to right, it I can do 1.1, that mm -hmm. is a decimal, sure. until it hits that letter, and then it's... I can do 1.1, can't return num, it could return, return num. dot, and then return num. It, it, it really goes back to what he was saying, which one does it look for first? That's the longest part of the string of a token before it's not a token anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if we think about, in some sense we want our lexer to be greedy, right? We yeah. want it to try to match as much of a token as possible, and that's the token we want it to return. Right? So we want it to first return decimal because we want it to consume as much as possible, right? Otherwise, it doesn't make sense. How would you, if you're programming, if you wrote one, dot, if you had any token that was a subset of another token, right? You could never get that token back. So if we had num and decimal here, well, all decimals begin with a num, so you'd never, uh, you'd always get that num before getting the whole decimal, right? And the reason why we wrote this token is because these are important to our language. These, the decimal and the num are important when we interpret our programming language. So yeah, so we want it to return decimal, and after it returns decimal, what do we want it to return? ID. 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 How, ID, and then how much would it consume? I'd go up, up to, to the dot. The one. <coughs> up through the one. 
Right. So ABC1 is an identifier, right? Exactly. And then what it, re what it returns? Dot. 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 Dot's the token that it matches, and then what it returns? No. Two. No. Exactly. Okay, cool. So you've just discovered and learned on your own uh, the longest matching prefix rule, which is a very long way of describing what you just said. So the idea is when we're lexing, when we have these tokens, we all our lexer always wants to match as many strings of the input string as possible. Sorry, as many tokens of the input string as possible. And that's the key. This is the only thing this thing does. Yeah. So you would have to, yeah, so in this language, uh, in what we've described here with the tokens. But this would, that would, from this string it would be You would possible. need to put something in that it matches no token. That yeah, you start. could probably, you you could put it, it would depend on the language. Here you could put a dot in between here, and then that would separate it. You'd have an uh, ID of ABC, a dot, and then a decimal of 1.2. Um, in normal programming languages, how do you differentiate your string? Space. Space, white so you, space. So you would have to. So you'd have to define space tokens. Exactly. You ah. define white space as one of your tokens, and you'd say, okay, um, you'd say, okay, so uh, you'd say, yeah, everything is like this, and then you'd have another token that says white space, and so that way you could separate it by white space, and it would be able to understand that. Oh. And That's a token too. Yeah, exactly. White space is just a token, right? Which makes sense because you can program with white space, right? As mm -hmm. we showed on the first day, right? right? So white, there are, how many different types of white space are there? A bunch. Infinite. I don't know about infinite, there's but like a bunch, yeah. There's definitely like a bunch. There's spaces, there's tabs, there's new lines. There's a lot there's, of extra ones that aren't used there's, anymore. Yeah, line return, carriage return, uh, LR, what is it, CF, carriage? Backslash R? The Linux dot, the DOS line ending is different from mm -hmm. the Linux line ending. Um, there's like so four just right there. There's a bunch. There's a bunch. What about like comments? Oh, yeah. Like slash slash. Slash slash for start of a comment. Or slash star, star slash. Uh, yeah, exactly. Cool. All right. So this is just describing in more details this. And there's actually not any more details. I guess the only thing to think about is what if it turns out that I have two tokens and they match? <laughs> so we decided we want the longest length. String to of the input string to match that token. What if I have two tokens that are the same length? Whichever one was written first. Yeah, the or answer is it's arbitrary, right? Arbitrary. Essentially, but what we'll use in this class, and it will be specified, is that um, the higher up on the token list is the one we want, only if there's a match on length, right? So we always want to get as much as possible. If we can't then we want to go by whichever one's higher up on the token list. Does that make sense? So we gotta break the tie somehow, right? So. I didn't get it, sorry. So the question is, um, I mean, in this example right here, I don't think it's possible to have both of them match. Oh, yeah, no, I don't think it's possible to have both match. Uh, but we'll see examples where it's possible that it could be an ID or a number. Right? Like we could have identifiers start with. Oh, start I get it left. now. Okay, matches two tokens. Exactly, yes. Okay, pick so which one do you pick then? Okay. Exactly, so, but it's only after the length is the same. You always want to go as far as possible getting the length. Got it, got it. And then if there's a tie, then you choose the one that's higher up on the precedence list. Question. Does yes. that mean that it has to go through and do more? It has to try every token on the string and say, okay, now if we match two, and if we match two, okay, which one of those came first? And then yes. So the more tokens you have, the more yep. longer it takes. Yeah, so we'll see. There's actually a really easy way to do this by hand. So that's what we're going to look at. And you don't, you actually can go through it's actually a little bit reversed of what you said. So instead of for this string going through each of these tokens to see which matches, you go through the string a character at a time, keeping track of which ones currently match. Right. And then when you get to a point where only one matches, you know that's your token. 
Otherwise, if you get to none of them, you go back to the last one you had, and you say which one was the higher precedence. All right, cool. OK, so the idea here is we're going to start from the next input symbol. So, the, uh, so this just means we're consuming that string, right? So every time we call get token, we're going to move downward. We're going to move down through that string. And we're going to find the longest string that matches, right? Longest matching prefix, longest string. It's not a random name. It follows very simply from that. And we'll break ties by giving token listed first. OK. So we'll go through an example of this now. I'll probably maybe do another example uh, just to kind of show some stuff. But um, so the idea is we're going to make a table. And so, and I. I don't know, maybe it seems tedious to do it like this. Uh, but this is the way you can do it. It's, I mean, it's very easy. Eyeballing it will usually not work because, for instance, back to this example, right, with 1.1 ABC12, when you look at this as a human, you think, oh, it's going to be a decimal, an identifier, and a decimal, right? Because that's how your brain parses it. Because you've been used to looking at these things and separating things into different categories. Right? But really, that's not how the, the lexer is going to parse it. And so this is a very easy way that you can do to um, show and demonstrate exactly what's happening at every step and why you chose um, why you chose a certain string over another one. So this is going to be very in-depth. So do I want you to do it like this on your homework and your midterms and exams? Yes. Yeah. Why? Because if you show our work, you can yeah, it's so like a map to follow. You exactly. Right. If you just look at it and write down some tokens and they're wrong, let's say the first you made a mistake on the very first one. How do I know that? Right? They're just all wrong, so you get zero, right? But if you show this table and I can see your derivation process, so I can see, oh, maybe you messed up getting the token for the first input, but all the other tokens after that, given that input, were correct. So then you can get partial credit, and so that I can understand your thinking. So this is a way of you describing your thought process when going through and doing this tokenization, uh, this lexing. Okay, so we have three columns here. On the left we have the string, uh, the left column we have the string, the next column we have matching, the next column we have the potential, so these are the potential tokens that can match, and on the right we keep track of the longest match. Okay, so you can see maybe that the caret, right, is before the string, so we haven't parsed anything yet, right? We haven't called get token. Um, so what's so what regular expressions could possibly match at this point? Anything. Yeah, anything, right? That's why I have all there. Any token could possibly match because we haven't even started looking at anything. It's a token in potential. Yeah. So it's as if the stack is full with all the potential tokens. Yeah, exactly. And we're gonna every character, we're gonna look at every token in potential to see if it could possibly match. OK. So we're going to examine the first token. And we're going to say, OK, uh, the first symbol. And say, OK, 1. So what tokens match 1? No more decimal. Does decimal match the string 1? No, so it's potential, potential to match. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right? So it could potentially match. It matches the first character there. But we haven't reached the end of that regular expression. We don't know if that string is actually in there or not. Uh, does identifier match? Nope. No. Does dot match? Nope. No. So we check, we check both of those. Uh, we check <coughs> decimal. So we keep decimal and potential. And then we check num. So does num have the potential to match? Yeah. Yeah, right? Because number, uh, it has the potential to match, right? Because it's first 1 through 9, which matches, and then 0 or more. So because of that 0 or more, right, it has the potential to continual match. And, um, and remember, we're not looking at the rest of the string now, right? We're only looking one symbol at a time. But num also matches right now, right? So we could stop. If we stopped here, we'd say that num matches this first character. That's why we put num in the second column. All right. Then we go to we're going to look at the next character, the dot character. So, do we look in that test for 
identifier to see if identifier matches one dot? <coughs> Why not? Just shaking your head. Because you know it's not one of the potential ones. Though. Exactly. It's not one of the potential ones. So we're not even going to look at it. We don't care about it. We've already decided it doesn't match one. If it doesn't match one, there's no way it can match one dot, right? Okay. So of decimal and num, which ones have decimal. the potential to match one dot? Decimal. 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 So exactly. It's going to be currently matching. So it's actually, hmm, that's a good point. It should not be in matching right here. I'm going to have to update this. Why not? Um, because, because one dot is not a decimal. Exactly. One dot is not a decimal. Not like before, decimal. one matches, one matches num because one by itself matches that regular expression num. If we stop right there, that matches. But the way we wrote decimal, does one dot match? Decimal? It has to have a number following. Exactly. It has to have a number. So it still has potential to match there. So what are we sitting at right now? So this is that. Huh? This is nothing. Nothing at this point. Matching exactly. Nothing. Matching nothing at this point. Uh, so in order to jump to the next token, it has to match nothing twice? Well, we have to wait until we're, we're keeping on trying, right? Because we don't know where this is going to end up. It could be that decimal never matches, right? Because it could be maybe there's an A right after the dot or something, right? Or another dot. Um, so we don't know right now. So uh, if it's an A, then it jumps to a different token. Yes. But we keep track of the fourth one. So up, up to this point, number no longer matches. But it did match, right? We had a match for a number of length one. So we want to keep track of that, because we don't know what's going to happen when we go forward. We may fail. We may not match any tokens. And so we want to know what was the last token that we saw that was valid. So we keep track here. Num, what's the thing next to num? The token itself. Uh, no, but close. That's, that's a good. The number of tokens found? Value. The number of, yeah, the length of that token that matched. Oh, okay. Alright, so we found num, and it's length one. Okay. Okay. So now we go to the next, we're going to go to the next one. Right, we're going to move one more character over and look at 1.1. So which, which uh, tokens are we evaluating? Decimal. Decimal, just decimal, right? Because it's the only thing it could possibly be. Exactly. We've already decided by looking at it character through character that one dot whatever, that could only possibly match a decimal. Right? There's no other regular expressions that we have that, or tokens that we could have to match that. Um, so, is it, so after we match 1.1, with decimal, so does that match a decimal? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, it matches it, so decimal is going to be in the matching column. Is it, does it have the potential to match? Yeah. To, to, it doesn't have the potential to match anything else other than decimal. Correct, but is, yes, but decimal has the potential to match, right? Yeah. After we match 1.1, right, we can continue going if there's more decimal. Mm -hmm. I see. Perfect. And then we persist the longest match, right? Because that's still the longest match. Wait, but the current longest match is 1.1. That's true. Uh, so but that's still, wrong, right? Uh, it should say decimal and two. Uh, that should be three, right? Three. Have, three. Or three. three. Is it three? That's the third character. Yeah, that's, that's the point. the I best think match up to now. But the number <coughs> would need to be on the second row as well, where number Yes, yeah. exactly. So. I think it's more of a stylistic difference. So, right, because as long as you put it, because so we still, we're matching decimal, we still have the potential to match decimal, right? So if we, we could put it here for three, but we haven't, since we can still match decimal, right, there could it's be more after five. that. So it could be four, it could be five, it could be six. Exactly. So for me, when it goes from matching to not matching, that's when we mark it and put it in the longest match. Oh, I get it. Okay. It's fine. Does that make sense? I mean, you could do it the other way, and actually, that actually makes more sense, so I may update that. Oop, what did I do? So, like here, right, one way to do this would be to put number here on the second row and say, okay, at this point, we know we've matched number as one, but we're still potentially matching number, so. A longer number. Exactly. We have to update it for every single row that we go down, right? Because number could keep matching, and we could do number one, number two, number three, until it finally stops. 
Uh, so what I've done here is keep track of essentially when it goes from matching to non-matching, right? When we've finally stopped matching that number, then if that length is longer, we write it here. It's permanent. Exactly. Yes. Don't we, didn't you say earlier that we technically don't match anything on the third line? The third line, uh, right, this also needs to go away. So it basically goes until it has potential of being nothing else. Exactly. And has a valid token already yes. matched. Yep. Which is, which is why it can continue. Ah, so the third line, okay, so remember, we're matching everything from where we started to where the current token is, right? So that's the thing. We're not matching on the third row when we look at dot. We're not matching dot itself. We're matching one dot and seeing which regular expressions match there. But that's not a one dot. Right, but it's a potential. So decimal still has the potential to match because it matches, it matches one dot. It matches that prefix. So that's where the prefix comes from. Yes, that's wrong. I'll, I'll update that before I post them. Right. And if I don't, remind me. When you're looking through these slides and you're like, look in your notes, but I just crossed it out. Yeah. Okay, then let's go to A. So what happens when I go to the next character, when I investigate the next character? Then it's a decimal. It still has the potential to be a decimal. When I look at A, is 1.1 1 .1 A uh, decimal? Well, you're not, no. you're, this one's still looking at 1.1. 1 .1. Yeah, when we go to the next oh, one. Oh, so the next one, one then it's, yeah, then it's. Exactly. Yep. So there's no potential, there's nothing that could potentially match. Uh, there's nothing currently matching, but have I found the longest, what's my longest match up to that point? Decimal. And how long? Three. three. Exactly. One, two, three, because it went one dot one, so it's made three steps. So exactly, yep. So I've consumed, by looking at all the tokens I have, right, and looking at this input string, I know, okay, the longest match I have is three characters. The first three characters of this string matches 1.1, and that's a decimal. And that's the longest match. So this is the length of the token, three? Yes, so that's what, so then the next step would be, we would actually, so this is what I kind of do here with underlining. Um, so we would return decimal. So we call get token on the first time here. We're gonna return decimal. And we're going to say that 1.1 of the input string is a decimal. So that's why it's underlined. But now I want to keep going, right? I want to know the sequence of tokens. So how is this going to play out with the sequence of tokens, right? So now, remember, get token consumes the input that it, that it, uh, that it uses to return a token. So next time I call get token, right, 1.1 is already, we've already decided it's a decimal. We never go back and change that decision. So now we're going to start parsing, we're going to start doing our lexing from here, from after 1.1 before ABC. Mm. Yes? If, just for, for hypothetical, let's say that there wasn't a 1 after that first dot. Mm -hmm. So we start off, say it's a number, then we go to the dot and say it's, it could be a decimal. Mm -hmm. Then we go to that A. Mm -hmm. And say, we, and we say nothing matches. Decimal doesn't match. Uh, but so couldn't it? Here. So, but in that case, it would be one dot an ID or a number dot a decimal or an ID. Right. So then we would return. We'd look at when we have no more matching and no more potential. We'd look at what our longest match was. So wouldn't it? One. Wouldn't it technically need to match dot? It would be num first. It right. It would. Num it would match num first. Then it would get to that dot. Yes. And, and match then we would it as go a back. Dot. So we'd return that one token num. Mm -hmm. We would consume that first one, and then we would, when we called again, we'd look at the character. We'd see, okay, all of them are valid. Mm -hmm. The one that matches is a dot. We go to the next one. Nothing matches, so we'd return uh, dot. Actually, I think we'll Should, shouldn't that technically it. happen here? I it, mean, it would, yes, if we, if this was a completely different example. Well, I mean, no, but I mean, in this example, shouldn't that happen? Because if yes, 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 we'll get to it the second part. So we're going to consume so this ID is going to consume ABC one. Ah, but we haven't, so we haven't looked at anything yet. That's why the, the carrot is technically between the one and the A. So we've only, so we found our match, we've returned decimal, we consumed the first three characters, and now it's like we started from a brand new string. That's why on this row I've gotten rid of that 1.1. So now it's like our input string is abc1.2. So now we have the potential for all to match. I'm just going to step through this real quick. Um, 
We are going to match an ID. We'll go over this more on Monday, too. Um, we say an ID could possibly match, right? It has the potential to match, and it's currently matching. When we look at A, we step through. We see ID also currently matches and potentially matches. And we step through all the way until we get to 1, which still matches. When we finally get to the dot, we say, OK, the longest match so far, ID no longer matches. So the longest match is an ID of like 4. Mm -hmm. So we'd return that as our token. And then here we'd say, uh, okay, the potential, uh, I'm missing a, oh yeah, here it is. The potential could be all. I look at this first one, the only thing that matches is a dot. There's actually no potential. Um, so I go to the next one, I'd say, okay, the longest match was a dot of one. And so I'd return that, and then I'd finally return, look at the last character, return the num, and then if I called it again, I'd return like end of file or something like that. Okay, cool, so thanks. What I was saying. Sure. So on that, are you on that level bar? The last two? So, going off the I have one just for the one that I I don't know. Just to show it. We matched 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 it. I'm taking it with that point. Are you probably taking it with that point? Yeah. I'm actually in the one. So I don't even have to see if I can sit here. Look at decimal number two hours. And then you go to the next one, we say, okay, not to be a number. You're not taking the uh, interface, the human interface. One dot. Then get in. Go one, that's a number. One dot. That could be a number. No, that got interesting. That looks like that. Like a video game. Um, you can do it either way. Yeah. Like or or good concrete. 
a reality yeah. video. Yeah, then we look at the next one. Oh, he's with Lee. Exactly. So Let's keep going through his mouth. Okay, that sounds interesting. So then we see, okay. It's so we look, the only thing we look at are potential and potential. Basic games like Chapter 6 and 4. I don't no. have does enough potential room potential for no. complicated no. games. One I saw this match. guy yeah. who designed a fleet of flying droids. It doesn't match. It has a potential to match. Mm -hmm. Correct. And we're going to put decimal here. They, they held a sheet. Look for and if you drop something, it also the say droids will catch it. Also be oh, because we're, oh, remember, we're going to so match like from the beginning. Fell in the sheet, so the so droids the will come why together so that it won't backtrack. It wouldn't pull the droids down. It would come together and slow the object down. And then they would spread out. It backtracks when it's deciding. And then throw it. The droids would come together. It does not backtrack. After it decides. And then they would catch it again. Yeah, exactly. I was like, pretty how could it be cool? Yeah, it's completely useless. Yeah, it doesn't look at yeah, all. Yeah, it's useless. Okay, it's, it's, it could be a decimal. Yeah, so now let's, let's look at 1.8. I don't know where you were going to fly. Let's look at 1.8. Right? And it says, okay, that is not enough. That's definitely 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 not enough. That's
I would take that as a massive compliment. Like, like, I'm so it's not terrible. Way. I would like it, assign you a homework on Friday and make it do on a Monday. It's machine. Like, oh, that, that, that was that was, was the main thing. Yeah. Yeah. We hadn't yeah. got it posted, yeah. then we'd only get like a day or two to work. Oh, yeah, I think that's probably use four six. They use Solid Code. Yeah, it's understandable there. So there's a difference in how it works. But from what I understand, that's basically these. That's that's much better. This thing, sweet.